right, today we're going to do lesson 1.4 and we're going to be solving absolute value equations. So before we start looking at this lesson, can anybody remind me or remember what an absolute value is? Trevin. I mean, I'm away from zero. Okay, very good. The distance that a number is from zero on a number line. So for just a minute, close your eyes and I want you to visualize a number line. And right in the center of it is zero. All right, is everybody there? We're looking at zero in the center. If I ask you to go to three on the number line, how many spaces away from zero are you gonna go? Three. three. All right, now come back to zero in your mind. Everybody back at zero? If I ask you to go over to negative three from zero, how many spaces away are you? Three. You're three, okay? You're still three spaces. Because remember, whether I'm walking forward or whether I'm walking backwards, my actual distance is never negative. So since absolute value is how far away a number is from zero on a number line, the absolute value of any number is positive. So the absolute value of 15 is what? 15. The absolute value of negative 16 is 16. So the absolute value of any number is positive. So today our question is how can you solve an absolute value equation? So far, we've been solving simple equations, multi-step equations, and most of that is going to stay the same. However, before we can ever start an absolute value equation, there are two things that we must do. We must write two equations. So when we're looking at an absolute value equation, we are actually going to be solving two different equations. Okay, great. How do I write those two different equations? Well, equation number one is su super simple. We're going to remove the absolute value symbol. So you're going to look at your problem, you're going to take off the absolute value bars, and you're just going to write the problem down as it is. Really easy. Equation number two, we're going to do that again. We're going to remove the absolute value symbol, but this time we have to change the sign of the answer. Now please focus on changing the sign of the answer. We will never ever change the sign inside the absolute value bars, ever. We are changing the sign of the answer. What is the absolute value equal to? That's the one we're going to change the sign on. So we'll see that here in just a second. And lastly, we got to always check for extraneous situations or solutions. Anybody remember what an ex extraneous solution would be? All right. It's an answer or a solution that does not work. When we plug it back into the problem, it makes a false statement, meaning it's not actually a solution to the problem. So we are going to have to check. So far I've left checking as optional, but now for these we are going to have to check. So let's look at example one. Letter A, the absolute value of x equals 10. Well, we have to write two different equations. Equation one, we said we were going to simply drop off the absolute value bars and write down the rest of the problem. And we're finished. For the second equation, we're dropping off the absolute value bar and then we're changing the sign of the answer. Well, the problem says that the absolute value of x is equal to 10, so we're going to change that from a 10 to a negative 10. Now we're going to plug it back in, okay? And we're going to do this mentally. If you need to write it down, by all means, please write it down. But for sake of time, we're going to write, we're going to do these mentally today, the checking. But let's plug 10 back into the original problem. What's the absolute value of 10? Does 10 equal 10? Awesome. Plug in negative 10. What's the absolute value of negative 10? Does 10 equal 10? Awesome. Both answers work. All right? Letter B, what's the first equation going to be? x equals 25. We simply drop the absolute value bars and we write down the problem as we see it. What's the second one going to be? x equals negative Good. We drop off the absolute value bars and we change the sign of the answer. So x equals negative 25. Go plug it in. 25. What's the absolute value of 25? Does 25 equal 25? Plug in negative 25. What's the absolute value of negative 25? 25. Does 25 equal 25? Yes, so both of these are our answers. Now, look at this next note. Absolute values that are equal to negative numbers have no solution. Now, this should make sense to you because remember what we just talked about? 
is the absolute value of any number ever going to be negative? So then how can the absolute value of x equal a negative number? So if your absolute value is ever set equal to a negative number, there is no work for you to do. You're going to write down no solution and you're going to move on. It cannot be done. Absolute values cannot equal negative numbers. Any questions so far? All right, example number one. We're going to keep going. Letter D. Now we've got binomials inside those absolute value bars, but we're still writing two equations. All right, Joshua, what's my first equation going to be? There you go. We're supposed to drop the absolute value bars and write the problem like we see it. So x minus 1 equals 4. What's the second equation going to be? Um, you add four. Oh, x plus 1. Think back to what I said. Will we ever change the sign inside the absolute value no. bars? X no. X minus 1 equals negative 4. X minus 1 equals negative 4. Very good. Now we simply have to solve the equation. How are we going to solve the equation? Add 1. Now look. The left side of both of your equations are exactly the same. Well, so we're going to do the exact same thing to both equations. X equals okay, five. so in the, hold on. In the first one, X is going to equal 5. Good. Because our negative 1 plus 1 cancels. It's going to cancel again in the second equation. So X equals... Five. Be careful. Negative 3. Signs are different. Subtract and take. Now let's check them. Plug in 5. What's 5? We do the work in the absolute value bars first. What is 5 minus 1? 4. What's the absolute value of 4? Does 4 equal 4? Yes. Awesome. Plug in negative 3. What's negative 3 minus 1? Negative 4. What's the absolute value of negative 4? 4. Does 4 equal 4? Yes. We're good to go. All right. Letter E. Alonzo, give me the first equation to letter E. 2x plus 12 equals 4x. And what's the second equation going to be? 2x plus 12 equals negative 4x. Very good. Very, very good. So 2x plus 12 equals 4x. 2x plus 12 equals negative 4x. Michael, what are we going to do first to solve this equation? Okay, very good. Oh, wait. Be careful. Don't call me after midnight. Which one of those steps are we going to get to first? Hold on. Michael can do it. There you go. We got to move the variable. Don't call me. We got to move the variable. So we're going to subtract 2x from both sides and we're going to do it in both equations. Okay? Good job, Michael. So 2x minus 2x cancels. We bring down what we have not used. What is 4x minus 2x? 2x. And in the second equation, we have 12 equals, what's negative 4x minus 2x? Negative 6x. Good. How do we finish this? Anthony. Divide both sides by what? 2 in the first equation. Don't help him. And what are we going to divide both sides by in the second equation? Negative 6. Good job. So, 2 divided by 2 is 0. I keep saying that today. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And what is 12 divided by 2? 6. Good. And then negative 6 divided by negative 6 is equal to 1. So, x equals negative 2. Now, we got to check it. Remember, we're going to work in the absolute value bars first. When you go in the bars, you've got 2 times x. So make sure you multiply before you add. That's the order of operations. What is 2 times 6? 12. What's 12 plus 12? 24. The absolute value of 24 is 24. Go to the other side. What's 4 times 6? Does 24 equal 24? Awesome. Now let's plug in negative 2. What's 2 times negative 2? Negative 4 plus 12. Uh, 8. What's the absolute value of 8? Eight? 8. Eight. Go on the other side. What's 4 times negative 2? Negative 8. Does 8 equal negative 8? No. no. So we have just found our first extraneous solution. Cross it out. If you don't cross it out, you're saying it's a solution. And we just proved 
that by plugging it in, we do not get a true statement. So it is not one of our solutions. All right, awesome. Look at letter F. Who wants to raise their hand and give me the first equation? All right, Trevin. Um, No. Uh, All right, Deja. Um, three plus x equals three. No. I Joshua. Three x equals negative. No. Nope. Other Joshua. Three plus x equals negative three. Nope. Nobody sees it. Nobody looks at that problem and sees. Oh, no solution. No solution. No solution. Listen, your absolute value can never equal a negative number. So no solution. I knew we'd get there eventually. Good job, guys. All right, any questions before we move on? All right, now let's look at the next part. It says you must isolate the absolute value portion first. So in order to write our two equations, the absolute value part of the problem has to be isolated first. So we are trying to get this absolute value of x minus two all by itself before we can write our two equations. So how are we going to isolate the absolute value portion of this problem? Joshua, we're going to subtract five from both sides. So we bring down the absolute value of x minus two and it equals four. Now can we write our two equations? Yes, and they are x minus two equals four and x minus two equals negative four. And to solve this, we are going to add two to both sides. So x equals six and x equals negative two. Let's check it. Plug it in, six minus two. The absolute value of four, four plus five. Does nine equal nine? Negative two minus two. The absolute value of negative four. Four, four plus five nine. does nine equal nine. Yep. All right, let's look at letter H. We've got to isolate the variable term. What are we going to do first? Trevin. No. Now listen, I'm actually okay that he said that because here's what I want to teach you. You've got a number and an absolute value bar with nothing between them. Understand this, a bar, these bars are like walls. You cannot go through them. All right. A parenthesis is flimsier. Okay. It bends. So that's where you distribute. A absolute value symbol though is a wall. You cannot go through it. So what does it mean when you have a number and a absolute value bar with nothing in between them. What operation is that? That is multiplication. So can we move, can we multiply or divide before we have added or subtracted? No. So actually to isolate this, we're going to have to do what first? Add three. Add three. No like terms to combine this time, right? But we can add three and move it to the other side. So we're going to bring down negative two times the absolute value of 5x minus 1, and it equals negative 8. All right? Now we got to move the negative 2. And how many of you are thinking at this point we should be writing no solution? All right, but is the absolute value part of the problem isolated yet? So we're not finished. We can't make that determination until the absolute value portion is by itself. So how are we going to move negative 2 to the other side? They're not subtracting. Remember, the number and the bar with nothing between them is what operation? Multiplication. multiplication. And what is the inverse of multiplication? So we're going to divide both sides by negative 2. So negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. We bring down the absolute value of 5x minus 1, and it is equal to what's negative 8 divided by negative 2? Positive 4. So now can we write our two problems? Yes, 5x minus 1 equals 4, and 5x minus 1 equals negative 4. All right? 
How are we going to start to get x by itself? Add one. Add one to both sides. Awesome. So we got 5x equals 5. And we've got 5x equals negative 3. How do we finish? Divide both sides by 5. X equals 1. And x equals negative 3 fifths. Now we got to check them. All right, let's check them. Go in the absolute value bar first. What's 5 times 1? 5 minus 1. 4 times negative 2. Negative 8 minus 3. Negative 11. And does negative 11 equal negative 11? Yes. All right, plug in negative 3 fifths. 5 times negative 3 fifths is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 1 is? What's the absolute value of negative 4? 4. 4 times negative 2? 8. Negative 8 minus 3. Does negative 11 equal negative 11? Yes, it does. All right? So we are going to stop right here for today, and we will finish and do example 2 first thing tomorrow.